In this screencast on mass transfer, we will talk about mass transfer in three dimensions. We will first derive a 3D mass balance in Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z. We will then simplify to one dimension and compare with what we have seen previously in earlier screencasts. We will look into two other coordinate systems, cylindrical and spherical coordinates, before we look into one in stationary solution. And then we will talk about how you can solve these kind of equations using discretization and solving it numerically and that's what's done inside Compson Multiphysics. To derive the 3D mass balance we study an infinitesimal cube where we have diffusion possible along three different axes, convection possible along three different axes and a reaction inside. But let's take it step by step so let's first ignore the reaction and diffusion and have convection only and only convection in the z-axis direction. So on one side of the cube here we have a concentration Ca, on the, on the other side there is Ca plus dCa. So what comes in through convection is simply Vz times Ca. So Vz times Ca and then times the area to get the right unit. And then on the other side we have convection out Vz times Ca plus dCa because we have a different concentration here than on the left side and then we multiply with the area and then we have the accumulation term a dz is simply the volume and then the ca dt and we had no production term so that's zero and we end up with this equation down here vz dca dz plus dca dt equals zero mole per cubic meter and second let's add the fusion to this so we still have the convection term in and convection term out. We still have the accumulation term and we add a reaction as well. The reaction term times the volume, A dz. And what about the diffusion? Well, the diffusion on this side here, that's the concentration gradient on this side. So we take the derivative of the concentration on that side, that's Ca, times the diffusivity and then a minus in front because the Diffusion goes in the direction towards the smaller concentration. And on the other side, we have a slightly different concentration, and we take the derivative of that. And if we shuffle around and divide by the area and so on, we end up with this equation down here Vz times the CADZ plus the CADT equals the diffusivity times the second order derivative of the concentration with respect to the z axis direction plus the reaction term. So by this I think we have made plausible at least that the 3D mass balance will look something like this. The CADT is the accumulation term. We have a convection term here in three different directions. Vx, Vy, Vz. We have the diffusive part here where we have second order derivatives. Note here that when we talked about diffusion in the 1D case, one dimension case, we had the first derivative of concentration, now we have the second. And on this side we have the first derivative of concentration while we had simply the concentration when we looked at the 1D solution or 1D case. And we have the reaction term over here. Often you don't need an entire general in stationary balance, so you often you simplify, so we have one dimension, you take away everything here that's not uh, with respect to the z-axis direction. If you have no reaction, of course, then you take away Ra. If you have no convection, then this term disappears as well. And if you have stationary conditions, the accumulation terms vanishes as well. Now, before we go any further, let's just mention briefly the difference between these three equations here. You you probably recognize these equations s equals a t squared divided by 2 d s to t equals a t and d to s d t squared equals a do these three expressions say the same thing and what is needed to calculate s well they don't say the same thing because in this equation you simply need to put in the time and you need to know the acceleration and then you can calculate the distance s in this equation however you have the derivative of the distance equals a t. If you integrate that, you will get an integration constant. And if you integrate this one, you will get two integration constants like this, s0 and v0. 
The reason why I point this out is that integration constants have physical interpretations. So in this case, the interpretation of the integration constants S0 and V0 is that S0 is the distance traveled at time 0 and V0 is the velocity at time 0. So let's now look again at our 3D mass balance and simplify to one dimension. So we say that we have no reaction to start with and everything that happens happens in the z-axis direction. So we take the way what happens in the other directions and we take a make the accumulation term to get steady state. So we have this equation here and we can integrate that and then we get an integration constant and we have Vc times Ca and we have the diffusivity times the concentration gradient. We can shuffle that around and say that the constant equals and uh, what does it equal? It equals the diffusive flux plus the convective flux. But that we have seen before. We have seen before that Na equals the diffusive flux times the convective flux. So that means that the physical interpretation of the integration constant in this case is actually the molar transport. Okay, time to look at two alternate coordinate systems. If you want to locate something in a strange building, how do you do that? Well, if you have a cube, you can simply say the distance from this corner here, three in this direction, in this direction, and in that direction. And then you have located the place. But if you have a cylinder, that's kind of awkward way to do it because at certain distances, you're suddenly outside the cylinder. So instead you could do it like this. You have the distance from the bottom and the distance from the center out, and then you have the angle. And in the sphere, you can define it as the distance from the center, and then an angle in this plane, and an angle in the other plane. So when we wrote the equation for mass transfer in three dimensions, we used Cartesian coordinates. A more general way to write it is to use the Nabla operator, and that's simply taking the partial derivatives in all directions. So nabla c here is the derivative of concentration in all directions. So the c a dx, the c a dy, and the c a dz. While nabla squared is the second order derivative in all directions. So simply in Cartesian coordinates we have once again what we have before. So the c a dt plus v x times the c a dx plus v y times the C A D Y and plus V Z the C A D Z. And on this side we have the second order derivative. Okay, you may note here that you have V X, V Y and V Z because we have different velocities in different directions, while diffusivity we have here assumed that we have the same diffusivity in all directions. In cylindrical coordinates, however, and this is not trivial, you will instead get this equation. You still have the CADT over there, you have VR, the CADR, so so far it looks the same. But here we have the V theta, the angle velocity, how fast you move, turn around in, in this cylinder, times 1 divided by R. And over here we have 1 divided by R DDR, 1 divided by R squared. And this might seem messy, but actually by choosing the coordinate system cleverly you can sometimes get nice simplifications and don't need to work so much with finding a solution and the boundary values might give a good hint as to what kind of coordinate system that is best to use if you have a complicated geometry you need to discretize and use some kind of method like the finite element method or so which is implemented in Compson multiphysics but it might actually still be wise to choose the mesh, the, the subdivision, cleverly. And, but that's ki kind of advanced. But if you go into deeper studies into this, you might figure out that if I choose the mesh cleverly, how it's divided, I might actually be able to calculate things faster. In this course, we don't care. We simply let Compson Multiphysics divide it in whichever way it wants. 
I said boundary values are a clue to what kind of coordinate system that might be good to use. So what are boundary values? Well, one boundary value is that you know the concentration at the border or you, that you know the mass transfer through the border. You can, for example, know that the mass transfer is zero. You may know the relation for mass transfer through the border. So this is uh, the diffusive flux equals the mass transfer coefficient times the concentration difference. Or you might know that uh, you have for symmetry reasons have no transfer across the symmetry line. For example, if you stuff a pipe full with some goo and then put it in a river and let this goo diffuse out of the, uh, of the pipe, and if it's open in both ends, you might expect that you have no mass transfer across the midline of the tube because it's leaking out in both ends instead. Even if we know boundary values, usually the 3D mass balance is not solvable analytically. But there are exceptions, and this is one exception, uh, which is basically the penetration theory. We have a medium here and another medium here, and at time equals zero, we have a constant concentration in medium two. It's simply this concentration down here. And at time t, we still have the concentration C2 far away from the boundary here. So this is actually the penetration theory. The solution for this equation is given by, and this is not trivial, this equation here. So the concentration at time t is the concentration in the medium one minus the difference between the two concentrations c1 minus c2 times the error function of the distance divided by two and here we have the diffusivity and the time and the error function is given by this equation here and you might have that on your calculators or else you can use a table like this and let's do an example. We have ammoniac, 15,000 mol per cubic meter that is spilled out on top of a water surface and there is no, no mixing, so there is no convection. So it's simply diffusion into this water. And the question is, how long time will it take for the concentration at 0.1 meter depth, so 10 centimeters depth, to become 150 mol per cubic meter? And the diffusivity is 1.64, 10 to the power minus 9 square meter per second. Okay, so we have this equation here. We're looking for a uh, concentration here of 150. And we know that if we wait long enough, so that we have the same concentration as in outside, we will have 15,000. So this is the concentration in the other medium, which we might reach. If we wait very very long and so 15,000 and we start with a concentration of zero and then we have the error function of something let's just call it eta to start with and we can calculate what the error function should be here and that's 0 0.99 if we look that up in a table you see that this is 1.8 1.85 it's something between 1.8 and 1.85 and if you have a better table you can get 1.83 so we know that the depth z is 0 0.1 and we know the diffusivity so we can write up this equation here that this one here so this is what stands in here should equal 1.83 and we can simply calculate the time as 460,000 seconds which is 126 hours Okay, so we're done with solving one in stationary solution. Time to look into numerical solution of this kind of equation through discretization. So we have some kind of differential equation given. For example, that the second order derivative of y with respect to x equals some function f of x. And we want to, to know y, y of x between x1 and x2 and we know also fx but it's difficult or impossible to integrate analytically so what do we do well what to do is we discretize uh, x in small steps with a certain step size that we might choose 
And then we express this differential we have up here in the unknown y of xi. So we have instead of yx1 and yx2, we have several different on the way here. And then we express this uh, second order derivative with these unknown values. So we can do that like this, that the second order derivative, yeah, well, that's essentially the first order derivative in one point as compared to the first order derivative in another point divided by the distance between those points. And you can repeat that. So you take this derivative here is the difference between the y value, the function value in this point as compared to the next point divided by the distance and the same with this one here. And you shuffle around and you end up with this equation here. And when you do this, what this becomes is simply a set of linear equations. So you have ay equals f, where a is a matrix. So it's a big uh, sparse matrix. So that means sparse matrix is that you have zeros in many places. But you know, along the diagonal, in this case, we'll have values. And then you solve for all function values simultaneously. This is a bit messy to do by hand, but that's, this is what's actually behind uh, computer programs such as console multiphysics. To summarize this course so far with respect to mass transfer, we have shown how you can estimate diffusivity from other characteristics. We have shown how you can determine diffusivity em empirically, uh, or rather that's what you're supposed to do in compulsory task 2. We have looked into Fick's first law and the special cases Stefan equation, which is diffusion through stagnant component and equimolar counter diffusion. We have looked into a number of theoretical models where we can relate mass transfer coefficient to the diffusivity. And we looked into analogies, or rather the Reynolds analogy, which is a special case of Chilton Coburn's analogy. And today we looked into also the 3D balance. Next up is console multiphysics, where you're supposed to solve a few tasks.